In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at some of the changes to the Exchange Management Console. The first version of, of Exchange that used the new Management Console, of course, was Exchange 2007, and there were some uh, things that were definitely left out of the Management Console, things that required you and administrators to use PowerShell. I personally have heard a lot of complaints, and I'm happy to, to see that many of those things have been worked back into the Management Console uh, in Exchange 2010, and plus additionally some things that maybe we weren't even expecting. So let's take a look. When we open up the Exchange Management Console, let's just take a look at some of the new features. First off, when you select your Exchange on-premises, we've got a good organizational summary. Okay, The total databases and, and information about your client access licenses. Um, now, you know this this information hasn't really been updated, but you would see a good uh, collection of information from your organization. And all we really have to do is schedule it to collect organization health data, either immediately or at a later time. It will then go through and scan the information and 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 use it to populate that. Uh, portion of the Exchange Management Console. So it's a good quick look at the number of databases, the number of clients you have, number of licenses you're using, and things like that. This is completed now. It's actually just the set organization config uh, commandlet and the test system health. And so there we can see total users requiring CALs, the number of CALs uh, that we have, and we've got a database summary. We've also got server summary. Uh, total number of, of servers in, in a number of different categories. Let's go down to the recipient configuration because this is where we kind of want to focus on a lot of our changes are in the recipient configuration area when dealing with mailboxes, uh, just general user mailboxes as well as resource mailboxes. One of the biggest complaints in Exchange 2007 that I found was that anything you wanted to do besides moving or removing user accounts required that you use PowerShell. Okay, you were not you were basically only able to disable, remove or move when selecting multiple accounts. Well, that has significantly changed. When we select multiple accounts now, we do have enable archive, move, we also have a send mail function and we have the properties and you'll be happy to see that when we open up properties on multiple user accounts we are actually going to get a full-blown property sheet in fact there's nothing that we cannot do uh, from this so it virtually eliminated the need and one of the the previous requirements for using PowerShell <clears throat> as you can see here we are going to have the uh, user mailbox properties and it's not showing me current values but I can go in and make any changes that I would uh, that I would like you know so for instance let's just go change and we'll change the company to K Alliance uh, we'll change the office to Tampa you know uh, group memberships or, or quotas or any of any of those kinds of, of things okay let's say we're going to go in and disable uh, exchange active sync and I want you to notice one other thing and this is going to happen regardless of whether you are editing one or multiple accounts a little icon here appears that says show the exchange management shell command okay and it lists out the command that will be uh, that will be run. Basically now this is listing each individual uh, each individual user and then set user company K Alliance Office Tampa then it grabs the users again and pipes it into set CAS mailbox active sync enabled false. Okay, And that's basically what's going to happen when I hit apply and it comes up and says this is these are the changes that we're going to make and then makes those changes. The only time you ever saw the PowerShell commands that were being uh, made in the previous version was, and we see there those changes that were made, uh, was at the end of the wizards. And so it's very nice that you have those here. And like I said, in any situation um, where you, you know, you are actually going in and configuring something and applying, you know, in this case, a, a policy or turning off POP3, you know, as soon as you 
do that, that little icon will appear and you will be able to see the command that is being executed when you click the OK or Apply button. So that is extremely uh, helpful. Okay, let's right click and we're going to create a new mailbox. Another problem in the past was you had these room or equipment mailboxes which were uh, very nice, um, however they were a little bit problematic to deal with because you had to uh, work with them in the GUI. Okay, so we're just going to call this just to create a room for a conference room mailbox. We can specify an OU if we don't want to use the default one which is a change to the wizard. Specify the uh, alias and we can either have a database be automatically selected or we can specify one. We'll just let it be automatically selected. We will get the option for creating an archive mailbox for the account but we won't do that being that it's a resource mailbox. Okay. In the past, resource mailboxes really didn't have a whole lot of difference uh, with others, in, in the GUI that is. They basically just had a resource tab that had capacity and the ability to add custom properties. Now we have the ability to turn on the resource booking attendant and the ability to set everything that was command line only on the, in, excuse me, in the GUI. Okay, so the resource policy tab controls conflicting requests and repeating meetings. The booking windows, maximum duration, allows us to specify delegates of the mailbox and to forward meeting requests to delegates. Resource information is all the uh, cosmetic information. Uh, you know, maybe informational text such as uh, uh, resource is controlled by, you know, Aaron Lang, the delegate. Uh, we can, basically this is everything that was in uh, the command line only and it's now in the GUI. So in policy request, you know, all users are able to submit, uh, but only this person is able to actually uh, book the resource, okay? Um, oh, excuse me. Selected recipients, uh, or selected recipients would be Aaron Lang. I had that backwards there. Aaron Lang is able to uh, is able to book the resource, then all users could submit in-policy meeting requests, but they're subject to approval. And then the out-of-policy, if anybody's able to do that. So again, the point here is that this is all in the GUI. Um, it's all able to be done. You are not required to use the command line at, at all for resource and uh, whether it be room or equipment mailboxes and those schedule and that scheduling. So, and that's just a, a, a few of the brand new features in the Exchange Management Console. Uh, in another demo, we show there are wizards. We show uh, the Exchange Certificate wizard. Uh, we've got a lot of new capabilities, things that will keep us out of PowerShell if you're so inclined. PowerShell is, of course, still there. Uh, everything is still based on PowerShell. Uh, but if you're one of those that is kind of hesitant to uh, attack it full force, well, you do have the options uh, in the GUI in order to perform a lot of these functions.